comments? Do you find people are very receptive to that? Let me throw it out to the group. Do you find people are receptive? I'd say almost half the group said they work with team charters. What's been your experience? A mix. A mix. Talk about that a little more. Um, they're committed because they had you know, a say in it. As time goes on, they, they have to be reminded. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, they forget that commitment. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess, I guess overall it's, it's work, but you have to really stay on it and follow it yourself. You have to role model it because you can't be up there breaking the ground rules. But secondly, I, I could not agree with you more. Having the conversation, writing it down, is maybe 10% of it. The other 90% is enforcement. I mean, if you come up with ground rules and then you email them out to everybody, nobody ever sees them again. I mean, you might as well not have them. So for me, what I, I mean, I have my ground rules very prominently displayed because if, if things start falling off and I start seeing dysfunctional behaviors and I'm kind of losing it with the group, I want to literally be able to go up here and touch it and say, hey guys, you know, I'm seeing some PDAs. I know we had a strict rule around no PDAs. We agreed that we're going to take technology breaks every 45 minutes. Does that still work for everybody? Is that still a valid ground rule? Do you see how that's an easier way to deal with it than put that away? She told me she was going to tweet. So she's <laughs> The whole realization about the 90%. I gotta, I gotta get that one. Out. The enforcement, the enforcement is so important. But also to your your question, I really, really love your question. Let me just give you a little um, story from my own personal experience. I do training all the time, and I was talking about team charters probably a, a few months ago, and I had one person in the group share their experience where they said, "You know, we did it. We thought it was." working great, we felt great about it, and then at the end, we had one person who wouldn't sign it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's useful information <laughs> to have? Very, very useful. If they won't sign it, that tells you something. I mean, that's certainly data you didn't have before. So that's very, very useful. Any other experiences? Anybody had a particularly positive or negative experience with it? But one of the things I will say just overall is I feel like these are some of the things that I always feel are kind of in the back of our mind that we know we should address, we should talk about, but we're also busy just doing stuff, just executing. We never come back to these fundamentals. And I like the process just because I feel like it kind of forces me to go through these issues with my team and ensure we really are on the same page. The other thing that I like about it is our teams are so dynamic. I mean, I might start out with one team in January, and then I might lose two people and gain three or four new people. It's great to have a document as a starting point for getting people up to speed and talking about it. And to that point, when your team composition changes, what happens to your team charter, do you think? Yeah, it should be revisited and updated. You know, they're not necessarily bound by that. They didn't participate in that commitment process, so we really need to revisit it and see if it still works. It should be a living, dynamic document. It's not like, oh, we did that in May, that's over with. Okay? So constantly revisit.